So my name is Kevin Petrie, and I'm with uh, Attunity, which is a data integration software firm. Um, and we're excited to share today some details of an announcement that we made about a partnership with Databricks. I'm joined by my colleague, Graham Hainbeck. Graham is with Business Development and a technical guru on many things, including our new uh, Databricks solution. So what I'm going to do for a few minutes is just talk about who we are, what we're about, and frame the uh, discussion. So when he gives you a demo of what we're actually uh, have, to, have to show here, you'll, you'll have a little more context. Very good. Um, so we're really all about modern data integration. And what that means is improving the speed, the efficiency, and the delivery of data to modern architectures. We specialize in structured data and um, moving data from production databases, production mainframe systems, I-series, SAP, and uh, various other databases in order to make it available in real time for analytics. And so we're the leading provider of change data capture, which means that we can non-disruptively scrape change logs, transaction logs on source databases, and send those changes, those inserts, updates, and deletes, or source schema changes to a target so that you can run analytics on that transactional data. Uh, our technology has been used to migrate more than 120,000 databases to the cloud. Uh, we are very in tightly integrated and tightly partnered with Azure, with AWS, and now with Google as well. Um, we also provide comprehensive coverage of uh, platforms. So we support about 50 platforms looking at sources and targets, and that includes all the major databases, data warehouse, cloud and mainframe systems, uh, data lakes and streaming as well. Um, and so we've been broadening quite a bit what we're doing on the cloud, what we're doing with Azure, and now what we're doing with Databricks on both AWS and Azure. And the key to uh, accelerating these data pipelines, which we focus on, is uh, automating what's, what's happening, eliminating or reducing the need to do manual scripting for very repetitive processes. So through an intuitive graphical interface, you can discover and connect to your source you can set up some data streams, monitor the execution of that, and um, very easily change endpoints, change sources or change targets. What we can also do is automate the process to transform the data on the target. And that's what Graham's going to be walking you through. So to break this out a little bit more, um, we provide three flavors of data pipeline automation. The first one is that we can support database replication. So we can generate change streams from a variety of sources. We can deliver that set of changes to a data lake, to a data warehouse, might be on premises, might be on the cloud, and then refine and merge that data for analytics usage. Um, now, the, the first flavor to focus on, as I said, is this database replication. And this is really taking committed transactions from, let's say, a mainframe system, an Oracle system, and copying that either in bulk or real time with change data capture to a target database. Oftentimes, these target databases are now in the cloud. We also support uh, increasingly cloud databases as sources as well in order to support multi-cloud environments. Uh, with data lake automation, what we're talking about here, and this will be the focus for the demo, is that we can, I'm sorry, that should read data warehouse automation, that middle column there. What we can do here is automate the key repetitive manual aspects of uh, the data warehouse lifecycle. So the modeling, the design capability, the loading of data. We can also automate the uh, management and the update, the change propagation, through these target data warehouses. This is an excellent complement for more modern cloud data warehouse offerings. Uh, Google BigQuery is something that we're planning to support next quarter. We've got Snowflake on AWS, Snowflake on Azure, and we supported Amazon Redshift for some time. So this is going to greatly reduce the ETL coding that's typically required in order to set up, manage, and update a data warehouse. Uh, data lake automation is, uh, is really about merging change streams and setting up a commonly formatted comprehensive change history from which you can provision data sets for analytics. And I'll talk about that in a little more detail here. Uh, the first note I want to make is that when we talk about comprehensive platform support, this list continues to grow, particularly on the target side. Uh, we're, we're continuing to build out what we're doing 
uh, in terms of cloud targets. But you'll see that we support a wide range of sources and a wide and increasingly broad range of targets. You'll see the little blue icons here which indicate Compose. The Compose part of our solution is what gets to data lake automation and data warehouse automation. OK. So to frame the discussion that Graham is going to be diving into here, uh, as I said before, we provide streaming data pipelines for Databricks. And we can generate a change stream. We can capture data, uh, real-time transactions from a variety of sources. And we can transmit that. We can land it as raw deltas in various data lake platforms. Um, in the case of Databricks, we're landing it to Databricks Delta. Um, what we'll then do then is merge the change streams into a commonly formatted data store. It'll be a comprehensive change history from which you can provision subsets of data for analytics. So it might be a point in time snapshot view. It might be a, uh, a partial change history or it might be a real-time ODS view. But in any of these scenarios will enable organizations to take data that's come in from these source transactional systems and have it to a state of analytics readiness very quickly and greatly reduce the dependency on developers that are normally required in order to uh, create that state of readiness. So the benefits here are that you're going to get faster ROI on your investments in data lakes. You're going to get data and value out of data much more quickly uh, within the Databricks platform. We can provide real-time, continuously synchronized data at scale, very high scale. We have a, a way to make sure that you're managing potentially hundreds of data flows across many sources and many targets. So you can make sure that your real-time data is synchronized across a number of endpoints. Um, we'll also support, uh, as I mentioned before, clouds as sources. So we'll support multiple cloud platforms, and that includes Databricks on Azure and Databricks on AWS as well. Um, final point here is that we do integrate with the Databricks asset capabilities so that you can have analytics-ready, transactionally consistent data that is asset compliant, which is an important consideration when you're dealing with data that's sourced from databases. Good. So what I want to do now is hand over to Graham, and he can show you this in action. Thanks, Kevin. It's here. Would you like Whoa. my power? And no, I have power. I just need the uh, HDMI. Oops. Thank you. Cool. This is the uh, the hard part. There we go. And three. Ooh, it works. Very happy. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Graham Heimbach with Attunity. Um, I think I'm one of the last presentations between uh, you guys in the bar, so I'm sorry for that. I'll make it really quick. I think I've got about 10 minutes. Um, if there's any deep technical questions, come by the booth, uh, please, and love to have a conversation with you about all the uh, internals of Attunity, uh, Replicate and Compose. But kind of a quick demo. Um, I've got Azure on Databricks, or Databricks on Azure Delta uh, running, and then I've got Attunity Replicate and Compose. So as Kevin talked about, Replicate is our CDC engine. Uh, Compose builds our operational data stores and historical data stores. Um, so what I can do as a quick demo is we have the uh, Northwind uh, database. So I've got a MySQL database running, and I've got a, a simple application here. Um, also running then on the same virtual machine up in Azure is a copy of Replicate. And I've built a task inside of Replicate that my source is a MySQL database, and my target is Azure Databricks. So if I double click on my icon, I can take a look at my configuration details for, uh, for Databricks, where I've got Azure Blob Storage, uh, where we're going to deliver to first. And then, of course, my uh, Databricks connection, where I can pull the copy from command into data lakes. So there's two threads coming out of, of Replicate. Here we have a list of our tables from our source system, and I can also do transformations. So for example, in employees, we've got full support for disparate schema. Um, I do DDL and DML replication, so insert table updates. Uh, deletes, and we can also do some form of transformation. If I had parallel load, if I had partitions on my table, it was partitioned by month, I could open up 12 threads for my initial load. So we've, we've parallelism for high-speed data loading for in our initial load phase. Um, and then, of course, transformations I talked about. I could build a new column with Expression Builder, 
Um, I can plug in external routines uh, here, so something like HPE voltage for 256-bit triple DES encryption, um, pretty easy to use. And this process is up and running, so it's sitting there waiting. We've done the initial load um, into Azure, into Databricks, and uh, I can pop over to Databricks right here. Ooh, sorry, come back one. I have a separate, uh, I thought I had a separate window open. Anyway, I can pop in here. And we can pop in here to launch the workspace. And it's signing in. And then inside my Databricks, I've already got built a landing area. So if I look at my, uh, my data, I've got a, a set of a database called Northwind Landing where I've got my base customers table. So we've got a description of it. Uh, Tunity Replicate created these tables for me. And I've got a, a base set of tables loaded. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through an everyday scenario. So our customer, uh, Maria, decided that she was going to get married today, and uh, Mr. Jones, who's uh, one of our employees, decided to uh, propose, and we're very happy. So we're going to change her name to, uh, to Maria Jones and say save changes. Um, that's already written into the application. Attunity Replicate is listening for those changes, and in my graphical user interface, I can see I've done this demo a couple of times, so we've done three changes. Um, that data is already replicated over to the uh, Databricks environment. So if I look at Databricks here, this is my base table, and then we also build in our landing area a change table. So here's my uh, employer, customer's CT. And inside this table, we have a historical view of the changes. So uh, we've got a before image and an after image. Um, so I've done this demo a couple of times, or Maria got married to Mr. Jones, and they separated for a while, but they got married again, so we're very happy. So though that base information then can be picked up by uh, Compose. So Compose is our warehouse um, data lake building uh, environment. So very much, uh, it's just a graphical user interface. I define the source metadata. So we have our Northwind MySQL connection, and that's so I can get the metadata from my, my source instance. Um, and then I also have a connection to, uh, to Delta, to Databricks Delta. So that's where I'm gonna build my target, so make sure my connections are good. So yep, test connection. So they're working perfectly. Now I have a set of entities, and my entities are the definitions of my tables for my source system with my logical and physical metadata. We could also import an Irwin diagram if I wanted to, and now we have a description of the, uh, the data lake that we're building. So I'm gonna say close that. And what it does is build for me from the staging area my initial instruction set. So for example here, if I look at my employees table and I double click on it, we can see the dynamic mapping between the MySQL table and the Databricks Delta table. So it will auto map for you between first name and last name and, and all that type of good stuff. And or so I can add mappings myself. So I could turn around and say, you know what, I want to change my birth date, turn around, build an expression, and say, yep, I want to be able to do the left string or the right string, all the things you'd expect to be able to do in an extract load transform capability. So Databricks Delta is doing all the processing for us. Um, Replicate is the engine doing CDC that can either live up in the cloud or on-prem, but then we're passing all of this information over to Delta, and Delta's doing the processing for us. Under the covers, for those of us who uh, go, well, how does it really work, Graham? Um, if I close all these windows, we build the DDL for you. So I can say show the DDL. Here's my simple create statements based on the metadata that I've pulled from, from MySQL. And also, when I'm building my data storage tasks, so for example, I can turn around and say, let's take a look at the task commands, and here's the populate table. So we're building Spark SQL. So a simple insert into as we're passing the data across. You can modify this and manipulate this if you want, um, make any changes, or go through the expression builder, import it, and export it. So what I can do is I've already done my initial load. You saw that. We had some base uh, change tables. So I can turn around and say, you know what? Let's run this uh, CDC task. So I can say I've done this demo before, so it says done, so I just say run. And what it will do is pick up the changes from the CT table and merge it, doing an acid merge, to the target delta tables. So I should be able to turn around, it's running. And I can take a look at my monitor history. So I come back over here. That task is running, so full storage. There's my north wind. And it's gonna tell us the number of tables. It's gonna tell us the history. It's gonna tell us the details about which tables have been loaded and skipped. Um, we will only change, or only apply those change processes that have happened after the initial load. So that first multi-petabyte load was successful. 
um, and now we're gonna load that data. So what I can do is a couple of places I can take a look while it's loading. Um, here, say, hey Graham, how do I partition the data? Um, for my demo, I've partitioned it by minute. So basically every minute, as you can see, we're gonna turn around and create a new partition in Delta. Um, and I can also show the partition information in the landing table. Um, here, I'm just using a, a, a SQL workbench against connected to Delta um, in Azure. And I can say, yep, let's take a look at my, um, my Northwind operational data store customer information. Then it'll come back and you can see it's Maria Jones. And then if I take a look at my landing area, it should be her original maiden name. Yeah, so here's all the, the updates and deletes that I've done. I am over by 48 seconds. I'm over by 50 seconds. Okay, so any questions, please stop by after the booth and uh, hopefully you saw some data move. All right, thank you very tonight. much, thank you.